Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Rob here. Today I've got a video for you, it's gonna be a lot of fun. The cameras have changed my life. But I'd like to ask you a question. Do you have a camera that has changed your life? Do you have a piece of gear that really turned the direction of your life and sent it in a new path? Well, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. And with over 15 years of photographic experience, professionally working as a wedding photographer, over 500 weddings during that time, and probably almost 30 years of experience altogether with portraiture, I've got a lot of gear that I've come to use, and some of it has really been life-changing, and some of it's just been <laughs> unimportant, un, un, not even a blip on the radar. So today I'd like to share with you the gear that influenced me and that I consider uh, very impactful to my photographic career and who I am today as a photographer. Spoiler alert, some of these things may not be what you would expect considering the type of real rough reviews that I've given them if you stuck around to the channel. So. Leave a comment down below what your first camera was. I'd love to hear about it and uh, get into that conversation with you. Also, if you've got a camera that really changed your life, we'll talk about that. Guys, the very first camera that was ever mine was this Minolta Autofocus, this Freedom AF 35 millimeter. Now this little camera doesn't still work today. I guess it could if it had batteries and such. I haven't tried it in years, but my dad gave me this uh, for Christmas and on my uh, eighth Christmas. So it was uh, 1990, 1988. <laughs> it was 1988 when I got this camera and I was so cool because I was one of the only kids in school that had a camera and it was mine. I got to use it and photograph and pop. He promised me that if I could fill up a role, he'd develop a role. And of course, back in the day when film processing, you sent it out for a couple days at the grocery store, I filled up rolls of film pretty easy. It was cheap to get. Filled up so many rolls of film, in fact, that over the years, he just didn't develop all those rolls of film. So going back, I can develop some of my old film and some film that even he took that I have found through the years. This camera was really instrumental in building memories. and I've got a fond, warm remembrance of it. Now, there was nothing necessarily special about it. At the time, it was very small. I remember the marketing and I've looked up a little bit and it had the window and the autofocus. That was its big deal plus a relatively large viewfinder and a built-in Xenon flash. And it was an auto loader, which was great. And the camera was just small and easy to use. A, a total point and shoot. There wasn't anything to it that you could do. <laughs> you got a tripod socket, but I never used that. The coolest part was I took this on all kinds of field trips from when I was younger uh, to the Tabernacle Palace down in North Carolina, to Washington, D.C., to the Outer Banks, to Disneyland, to... Uh, Bush Gardens, you name it, uh, Smithsonian, the Air and Space Museums. I took it all over the place. And I also photographed birthdays and Christmases. And this was, like I said, my camera. And it was so much so my camera that although my dad used it from time to time, he got his own camera to use. <laughs> and this one was mine. So this Minolta Freedom AF 35 millimeter, I've just, I remember it. it's been in my hands for a long time. What a great camera. When I continue thinking about photography, I really, I had manual cameras, specifically like Canon T50, T70, stuff like that, and film cameras, so to speak. But the next camera that really changed my photography was actually this one. This is the Fujifilm FinePix S7000. And I bought this uh, when I got married back in 2003. And this camera ended up being the bridge to digital where I left behind many of my uh, my mechanical cameras, my film cameras. This has a six megapixel sensor with super CD, CD technology. This is really where Fujifilm was beginning to work on that hexa, uh, hexagon shape, a different shape than the bare arrangement in their digital sensors, which later on I would come to love in their X-Trans sensors. And that technology really got its start around 2002, 2003 with the super CCD and the hexagon formatting that they were doing with their pixels. It was really cool. Uh, six megapixels, although at different resolutions, you were limited to the different uh, ISOs that you could use, but a nice zoom lens, three times optical, 19 digital, they were terrible. It could do some film, filmic type functions with CPA and overtones like that. You, you guys know the deal, but it was just so cool to use. And it was an integrated all-in-one with the flash with the telephoto zoom for the digital part, as well as an extending lens for the optical part. Quite a few different functions through the menu and just made it a lot of fun. <laughs> Use, I've still got the, the card if I can get it out. Yeah, <laughs> look at this, two of them. 
Can you see that? Compact flash and Fujifilm's proprietary XD memory. <laughs> Crazy, right? Did you see what's in here? You know, how long did we have to wait to get two SD cards in a professional body camera for less than $2,000? I mean, still it's hard to get today in 2023, although you can get it, but it took forever. And here, Fujifilm was doing it back in the day. But as I said, this camera was the camera that I bought as a gift to myself and my bride when I got married in 2003. And it photographed the family, our kids growing up, all of that. Continuing on through there, it photographed and it served as my digital camera while I was beginning to build a skill as a portrait photographer. Everything up to this point, really 2000, 2000 2001, um, was done as a, an amateur photographer. So these cameras that we've talked about so far really uh, weren't invested much more than maybe a 50 nifty or things like that. And this camera is an all-in-one, really was didn't even need that additional lens or a flash. It just worked well as it was. I had a pop-up flash that I enjoyed. That worked well. But it was after this camera, while I was in the Army and photographing, that my unit recognized that I did a really great job photographing and wanted me to step out of ranks and photograph all the formation stuff. And if you guys have ever gotten a chance to act as the public affair NCO, something like that for your unit, your photographer, or if your unit didn't have one, that's awesome. So I got to do that. So uh, I got to step out of my role as an intelligence analyst and step into the role that got me outside of the chain of command. So I didn't really have to participate the same way everybody else did. And as an NCO, I had a lot more freedom. So this camera gave me quite a bit of freedom. This is also the first camera that I started photographing weddings on, not that it was my own, but others for soldiers that were in my unit that were getting married. When I started photographing weddings back in 2004, uh, 2003, 2004, um, it was for a case of beer and 20 bucks. <laughs> now, this has no raw. I guess it's got kind of a raw, but I shot all in JPEG back in the day. And it didn't take me very long to learn that I wanted more from the camera. So I went on from there and got into digital photography. And I don't have any of those cameras here for the real professional bodies, but I do have one that I have stuck with Ever since I started shooting a digital on Sony because Sony bought Minolta and they had the alpha mount and I still shoot Sony to this day. But Sony's are so, to me, utilitarian without character, so sterile, although excellent. They just don't, I don't know, they just kind of fade into the background, which maybe a camera should do. But I have always loved Fujifilm cameras because of their manual control knobs that harken back to a, a day of, of actual manual photography. We'll get to that in a minute. And one of the cameras I regret selling was my uh, X100S, as well as my X uh, Pro One, the original. I've had the X-T2 uh, and the X-T1 and stuff like that, and I've moved on from there. But it was this series of cameras, the X100S, that was the first camera that I shot with that had built-in neutral density filters, specifically on weddings, that allowed me to harness the power of a small flash, the FX20, EFX20, which I don't still have. I gave this camera and that flash to my son, and alas, uh, we have I don't know what he's done with the flash. <laughs> it's almost 20, but I don't know what he's done with the flash. In any event, the EFX20 was an excellent flash that really allowed this camera to take some high-speed, photography in the daytime because of a three-stop neutral density filter built in with a polarizer. And I was able to just get breathtaking wedding photos, photos of the family, photos of the kids. And it was for years that this camera, or uh, this series of camera was on my side. I didn't leave the house without it. Everyday carry, this camera was included, uh, the X100S. And of course, when the F came out, I sold it to upgrade to the F because I thought that was a big upgrade and it was. To this day, I still absolutely love this camera. However, I'm spoiled to the modern accoutrements of a cell phone because the, rea the reality is I stopped carrying this camera every day when cell phones, probably three years ago, uh, when cell phones, and this is a Z Fold, but they're, they're, the computational photography in your iPhone or your Samsung is really so good. It's kind of difficult to, 
to quantify carrying around a dedicated camera when I got to come home and I got to edit and everything else. got to do those things because I don't generally like to shoot JPEG here. I can just point and shoot with my camera and it, with all the computational photography, it just gets so nice. So I, the cell phone kind of, excellent cell phones, Apple kind of killed, in my opinion, the consumer camera. I think people talk about that a lot, but I look at this camera and I love it because of how it makes me feel, the viewfinder. I don't enjoy using it as much as I do. If I'm going to go through the process of just shooting manual with this and then through the viewfinder and not the LCD screen, well, I'm just going to do something else. And at that point, that is to shoot on my favorite camera in the entire world. This is the OM4T from Olympus. Now, there's several different ones, the OM4T and the TI, uh, the original T's had a battery drain issue where it would drain a little battery in there, which did your metering and ran the, the motors and stuff for this. So this camera does require a battery except for at 1 60th of a second and lower. So you can shoot manually. 1 60th of a second has to be the flash sync speed as well. But without a battery in the camera, a little coin cell battery about the size of a dime, you can't use a lot of the additional features. However, the OM4 was the first multi-spot metering system where you got to do programmable spots and you could actually do, today Sony's will do like 1000 zone, 1120 zone multi-metering within the half press of a second. Here you got eight. So you might multi a meter a spot by putting the center of the circle, right? The, the focusing circle, the center of the camera and the focusing screen on a spot that was bright and you might push the button for highlight, because that's a highlight. And then you put it in the dark area and you push a button for shadow. And then you put a button in the middle area and you push a button for uh, midtones between the highlight and the shadow. It doesn't have a midtone button. Anyways, you could do that eight times. So you could like re really dial in specific metering on this camera all by doing that Nikon nod and then take your picture. And then you could save it as a memo function. So if you were doing photography in a particular area and you could set that metering real quick with up to eight points and then as long as the situation didn't change and the lighting didn't change you could just keep shooting as, as well as all of the other uh, features of one two thousandth of a second shutter speed and shutter on the body design these beautiful zoikyo lenses i didn't get to get this camera until later on in my photography career just a couple of years ago and it's because these cameras were expensive and I couldn't just afford, I mean, I, I couldn't afford the luxury, I would say, of a manual camera with film that you've got to develop, but I've always enjoyed film. So when I had the ability to get this camera a few years ago, I picked it up as my collection and I've shot with it, done several videos of it, and I absolutely love it. Different lenses for it and have a great time. But this camera, to me, is the penultimate camera. Small, compact, lightweight, built like a tank, beautiful design, and if you can do it in film, you can do it anywhere. If you can't do it in film, are you really a photographer? I mean, if you want to be real, all of this, all of these things that are digital, they're just simulations. Yeah, they create something that's real, but they're all mimicking something that you used to have to know what you were doing. So having this camera and taking out and shooting with it reminds me that I'm still a real photographer because all of the modern day things like your cell phone does for you, I can roll out with film and through the Sunny 16 rule, shoot and do portraiture all day long and have a great time. And I do. I use this camera on weddings for my brides. We do uh, photography and stuff like that. Film's expensive. They pay an expensive price, but they get it. Well, we keep thinking about film. There's another camera that really came and just blasted the way through. And this is kind of really what started setting my photography apart. Uh, I was looking for a camera that I could do instant photography with that was as reliable as Polaroid used to be, not in the current iteration at the time when I got this camera five, six years ago. Polaroid didn't even really exist. It was the impossible project. Polaroid um, had gone bankrupt and the impossible project was making instant prints and the guy that was the number one to beat the company out there to beat was Fujifilm with their Instax mini prints excellent development still to this day excellent small cameras the problem was they were all zone focused you couldn't actually focus and they were all completely auto you couldn't do any manual stuff and yes there were other brands that allowed you to do some things like Lomography but I didn't think that their quality was what I needed for the consistency to be able to charge a bride basically $3 for a print, so $30 for a pack. 
of instant mini prints in an album and the album's extra. So I generally for 30 prints in an album, it's about 50 or 60 bucks. And I needed a camera that could do that. Check this thing out. Shooting that size print, the credit card size print, mint camera, the Instant Flex uh, TL70 right here with neutral density filters gave you the ability, gave me the ability to zone focus, right? To really focus using an actual focusing screen with a real focusing wheel. And I've just recognized a moment ago, I said zone focus. This isn't zone focus. That's the point. It's a true focus. So I can actually focus from right about with the close focus lens, about maybe 30 centimeters, a little foot and a half to infinity and regularly about three feet to infinity. I can focus with this and it's got a smart flash on here that actually augments and diminishes its power based on how close you're focusing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because it's a xenon flash, I can trigger other off-camera flash that have a slave function built in that pick up on other bright xenon flashes. So I could do wireless photography about that. Guys, five years ago, I posted a video on how to do that. And I showed you how to bounce this using some aluminum foil. Being as this is a one-of-a-kind kind of device that gave me the ability to focus, it also brought aperture priority, which was something that <laughs> was lacking on all other instant cameras. And because I got that aperture priority, I was then able to get consistent results. Now, I've sold hundreds of photos, thousands really. I've taken, goodness, I did a, photo, I did a video two years ago where I had done over 3,000 pictures with this and still going strong. I absolutely love this camera. Changed, changed my life and through my writings and my blogs and working with Mint and using this camera and putting on at Rob Ham Photo all the, all the settings that I use, taking people through my role reviews, the first 100, 100 shots, 10 packs, then it went to the first 1,000 shots, sharing with people how to do it. It really built up a reputation for me online and got me noticed here in Hampton Roads. And so this camera is really something that helped build my, photo, my photography, my photographic business. All of those cameras we've talked about have been point- shoot, work, move. But there's one camera and it's kind of a newer edition and it's sitting up there that I've got the biggest bit of rivalry, the love-hate relationship with it. But the reality is I don't think I could do my job as a wedding videographer, as a dad, as, as a photographer. I don't think I could do it without this camera. And I've got another one sitting right over there that I could share with you, but that one didn't make the cut. Sorry, HCX1. I love you. That shot a lot, but the Panasonic HCX 1500, this takes the cake for being the camcorder that is my go-to. In fact, I make the majority of my videos, right now I'm using a camera, but I make the majority of my videos with this camcorder. 10-bit 422 color sampling, 48 kilohertz sample rate, 24-bit audio, built-in handle with a light, professional grade, uh, controls for audio it can be broken down to a smaller package and Panasonic really included everything in this camera excellent stabilization the zoom is amazing image quality is also outstanding it is not good in low light I know that I also know how to work around that um, I know how to work with it to make it get great imagery even in low light it's not difficult, but the, the sensor is very noisy. I don't really like any noise, any gain above 10 decibels. It's small. The buttons are fiddly. The rings make a little noise. Mine kind of just does a thing. I don't know, but I love it. I cannot help but to love it. Panasonic built it in such a way that the auto function, the only way you get face and eye detect autofocus is if you're in full auto mode. They did that because they want you to use this camera in auto mode because they know the buttons are fiddly. The touch screen sucks as far as I'm concerned, not because it's not responsive, but because in order to get into the menu, you have to tap and hold for a couple of seconds rather than just being able to dive straight in. I wish there were options to change that where you could just touch and, and things would work. All of that being aside, I can't help but love using this camera. It's small, 
It's got a small sensor, one over 2.5, but it produces excellent results, and especially in bright light or a situation where I can light the world. Uh, you know, it's just great. I, I think my favorite feature of the camera is just the camera itself. I just enjoy it. And I hate it at the same time. You guys have to understand, I hate the buttons because my fingers are, look, and you can't feel them, right? So they, they, they screwed up. They did a bad job. They made buttons that are hard to know what you're doing. It's hard to know when you're sitting behind the camera. You have to look at it. And if you're going to have to look at it, they should have lit them up. Yeah, that sucks. I don't like it. But I absolutely love this camera. So, guys, I want to thank you so much for jumping in today and sharing with you this tour of the cameras, uh, the cameras that changed my life, and ending it up with this guy right here, the Panasonic HCX. 1500 they got several different versions of this but it doesn't really matter which one you get you're going to be happy with any of them and you're going to hate the buttons but out of all of them the one that started it all and the one that got me moving was this minolta af 35 millimeter and if you have a camera story like this and you want to share it please go ahead and leave that down below i'd love to hear it and respond with you in the comments i want to thank you so much for watching remind you to catch you on the flip side take it easy guys